Dr. Susanna Hills is joining us now to discuss the latest pandemic development. She's a pediatric airway surgeon and an assistant professor of ENT at Columbia University Medical Center. Dr. Hills, good to see you. Thanks so much for having me. So how confident should we be that the rapid fall in case numbers Deborah reported from in South Africa, what will, will we see something similar here, I guess? Well, I feel particularly reassured, not only because of what we're seeing in South Africa, but because of the numbers that were reported at the end of last week from here in New York. Um, it looks like case numbers across the state are down about 47 percent from last week compared with the week prior. Um, so, and, and that's new cases. So that that's a huge number. Again, the reporting is a little bit unreliable. Lots of people are testing at home. That doesn't necessarily get recorded. Um, but if that trend continues, then we're going to see the impact on our hospitalizations and, of course, on our numbers of severe illness and death. Um, we have to kind of monitor this and see what happens over the next week or two and keep in mind that while case numbers decrease, the decrease in hospitalizations, people in the hospital coming out of the ICUs um, and the pressure on the hospitals being relieved tends to lag uh, the new case numbers declining. So we'll probably feel a crunch in our hospitals uh, for, for several more weeks, even if the numbers are declining. But I do feel like the numbers here in New York may begin to reflect what is happening in South Africa, which would be great. So you and I have spoken about the concerns that everybody has uh, over the potential or the possibility of a new variant after Omicron arising. And, and during the uh, mm -hmm. World Economic Forum, Dr. Anthony Fauci spoke about this virus, Omicron, and how new variants are impacting immune response. I want to play a bit of what he had to say. We've only eradicated one infectious disease in man, and that's smallpox. That's not going to happen with this virus. The new variants can be eluding the immune response, and we're seeing that with Omicron. So Dr. Fauci is suggesting that we're going to be stuck with this virus. Um, do you feel confident that the approach that our public health officials have taken and have guided us with is the one that we should be following, given uh, that we're going to be dealing with this for a long time. I understand that science is always changing as we understand the nature of the threat. Say the science isn't changing, but our response to the changing nature of the threat um, is, is changing. It changes from time to time. Um, are we on the right path? Well, I think that many pieces of the public health messaging have been right on and really useful. There has been some confusion lately uh, with guidance from the CDC, but I think that take-homes that continue to be repeated like the importance of vaccination are, are really, really important, particularly in light of what you just mentioned and what Dr. Fauci was saying in this clip, that this virus is likely to be something that we're living with. And so we're very likely to be encountering an annual vaccine or an annual booster to have that be part of our regular um, public health routine, just like we do with many other diseases, including the flu. Um, so the focus on that, I think, is really important. Getting people comfortable with that idea, I think, is the one way we're going to transition into being able to manage this virus at a level where life continues and we can do all of the things that we're used to doing. Um, so that has been, I think, the most important piece of public health messaging. And I think also just getting people really accustomed and familiar with the guidance to, you know, wash your hands, um, to mask, to protect others around you when you're sick, I think, has also been really important and useful. So, doctor, I don't want to diminish the pain and the suffering that uh, folks who have become infected with Omicron have gone through, especially unvaccinated folks uh, who have found themselves in the hospital. But for the most part, those Americans who are fully vaccinated and who have received the booster, those who have been infected with breakthrough infections, have said essentially that uh, it's been, in some cases, difficult, uh, but it hasn't required hospitalization. So a lot of Americans are breathing a sigh of relief, and you even have some that are saying, you see, it's just as, you know, it's perhaps a bad cold, which is what some people um, have suggested all along. But my question has to do with what are we prepared if the next variant that comes down the line is m m closer to Delta or even deadlier than Delta? Are we prepared with all the measures that we've taken, mm -hmm. the vaccinations that have occurred across this country, the mask wearing that most Americans um, continue to, to employ? Are we prepared for that? I think we could be prepared. I think, you know, the approach or where we were when this Omicron variant really picked up pace, caught us off guard, and I don't think it should have. Um, we were we were slow to uh, 
to respond as we should have with testing, in particular with Omicron. Um, and I was really surprised that we had such a hard time getting tests initially, given that that was sort of the key factor. It's, it's such an important factor, particularly with these highly transmissible variants to, to managing the spread. So I think we know how to do these things. We have the testing capacity. We need to be prepared for variants that are particularly transmissible, like Omicron, that could crop up. I think it's really probable that we'll have additional variants um, and they hopefully won't be uh, like Delta. They hopefully won't be like Omicron in their transmissibility, but they could. So we've got to be ready to have tests available for every single American repeatedly over you know, the course of weeks to months to have a couple available a week. We've got to be able to have masks, surgical masks available for the public to give them out should we have a variant that is highly transmissible like Omicron. And we've got to continue to produce vaccines and work to get our unvaccinated and unboosted folks vaccinated and boosted. The, the, the fortunate thing hopefully coming down the line early in the, this year, um, in the next few months, maybe we'll be getting a vaccine for our youngest kids. That would be a huge benefit um, and a huge help to that particularly vulnerable population. All right, Dr. Susanna Hills, always great to speak to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Vlad.